In measured drawing, we need to have some points of reference. In this example, we can see that the image that we're working from is placed so that the vertical heights are exactly the same on the image as they are on the drawing. Therefore, horizontals can be taken from the drawing to the paper. It's a good idea to think about small measurements being built up to make large measurements. This increases the accuracy of the drawing. So working from the nostrils, one's gradually working out from there to find the top of the lip, from there to find the nostrils, etc. Vertical measurements are always being compared against horizontal ones as well. Sometimes lines are taken through the face. So if uh, one measures from the lip, what is above the lip or what's below the lip, where is the eye in relationship to a cheekbone, etc. Gradually this drawing progresses, moving out from the bottom of the nostril, always working from the same point of reference to gradually find the edge of the jawline. From the jawline we start to find the edges of the mouth and the neck. Gradually we'll build from that position too. Finding the cheekbones and the angles between things. The measuring calipers are particularly useful in gathering these small distances. Generally, the nose, the bridge of the nose, is about halfway down the head. As we go through the eyes, we start to find that there's about an eye distance between each eye. The eyes take up a very small amount of area, yet when we tend to focus on people's features, we, we generally see them as being too large. So again, careful measurement is being taken to ensure that the eyes are recorded as the right size. We're starting to find the ear, and generally the ear is about the same size as the nose. And if one takes horizontals across, one will see that the top of the ear corresponds with the bridge of the nose, bottom of the ear, bottom of the nose, etc. We're trying to measure and find these small spaces, we're trying to make a precise drawing, because we're going to build on that drawing later on when it comes to painting. At this moment in time, we're not thinking about tone. We're simply thinking about proportion. It's not a bad idea when one producing a drawing like this to work quite delicately, not pressing too hard on the paper. If a subsequent revision needs to be made, then it's much easier to rub out a delicate line than it is a hard line. At the same token, though, we can think about line quality, whether a line is hard, whether a line is soft, and that line quality may relate to the individual strokes that we're drawing. You can see the way in which these calipers can also be used to judge angles. It's really important when measuring angles that one measures an angle against the vertical or as horizontal, rather than one angle against another. Gradually, as we find the small proportions, it becomes much easier to start finding the big proportions. We can start to compare large against small, measuring big against other areas of the drawing. In this example here, we're taking measurements again from the image, comparing one against the other, trying to minimise the distance between the image that we're looking at and the drawing that we're making. The closer this distance, the less we rely on memory, which is where our drawings can often go wrong. This measurement is being taken to some extremes, but nowhere near as the extremes as we see in the work of artists like Ewan Eagle and William Coldstream. These drawings are happening relatively quickly. Once while working from three-dimensional objects, the whole problem of measuring is much more complex. Ultimately, we then start to have the problem that our eye can move and the figure that we're drawing can move as well. In those instances, we now need to have some fixed points. Ugla would use a pendulum suspended from the ceiling. He would use string strung between two verticals to give him an absolute horizontal line. And that would be the position where his eye would go, which would always ensure that his eye would retain in exactly the same position each time he made a drawing. He would make scrupulous notes of the figure in relationship to the background, ensuring that the figure would always be in the same position. In this instance, we can see the image has been inverted. 
a face drawn upside down is more easy to see as an abstract set of shapes and relationships. When it's drawn correctly the right way up, we tend to see the likeness of the individual, and that can sometimes throw us.